School Days According to Humphreys, Chapter 3. Rules, rules, rules. Usually, I enjoy a nice morning nap, but there was so much going on that morning, I didn't have time to settle in for a doze until the strange students left for recess. But my nap didn't last long because when the students returned, I heard Mrs. Brisbane talking and she sounded worried, worried, worried. Harry didn't come back, she said. Did anyone see him on the playground? Sure, Simon said. We shot some hoops. What happened to him, she asked. Simon shrugged. I don't know. Mrs. Brisbane, Brisbane frowned. I may have to send someone out to look for him. I'll find him, said Holly, waving her hand. Send me. Just then, the door opened and Mrs. Wright, the physical education teacher, entered, pulling Harry along with her. Mrs. Brisbane, I believe Harry is your student, she said. I found him on the playground loitering. Loitering? That was a new word to me. I wished I had a dictionary in my cage. Then Mrs. Wright added, when the bell rings, students should not dawdle. Dawdle? That was a funny word, too. I thought, I thought his teacher solved this problem last year, Mrs. Wright said. I noticed a silver whistle around her neck and crossed my paws, but she wouldn't blow it. But I, did, but I see she didn't. Harry, why were you late, Mrs. Brisbane asked the boy. Did you hear the bell? Harry nodded. Did you see that the other students were lining up to come inside, she continued. Harry nodded again. Yes, and I was about to get in line when I noticed this cool ant hill near my foot. I almost stepped on it. It was the biggest one I ever saw. So you lost track of time, Mrs. Brisbane asked. Yes, Harry said. Mrs. Wright shook her head, dawdling. Very well, take your seat, Mrs. Brisbane told Harry. Next time, get right in line. We do have rules, Mrs. Brisbane, Mrs. Wright said. I hope your students obey them. Mrs. Brisbane waited for Mrs. Wright to leave. Then she said, speaking of rules, I think it's time to go over the rules of this classroom. None too soon, I thought. But there, but <laughs> there was nothing too surprising about the rules Mrs. Brisbane had printed on the board earlier that morning. Number one, follow directions as soon as they are given. Number two, raise your hand and wait to be called on before speaking. Number three, stay in your seat while the teacher is teaching. Number four, keep your hands, legs, and other objects to yourself. Number five, walk inside the school and use your inside voice. Number six, treat people the way you would like to be treated. As I read the rules, I wondered how good I was at following them. I try to follow the teacher's directions, but what can I do if nobody gives me directions? For example, what if nobody tells me to bring a summer box to school? Still, those rules got me thinking. This rule about hand, raising hands make, makes me miss Raise Your Hand Heidi, who sometimes forgot that rule last year, but I liked her anyway. I can't stay in my seat because I don't actually have a seat, but I always try to stay in my cage when the teacher is teaching. I try to keep my paws to myself, and I hope that dogs, cats, and other large creatures will do the same. I also try to remember to walk inside the school, but I have to admit, sometimes I roll in my hamster ball. I always use my inside voice because even when I shout, it's not very loud. And I treat people the way I'd like to be treated, at least I mean to. Then Mrs. Brisbane talked about the consequences of breaking the rules, which made my whiskers wiggle. A warning that was bad enough, and, was, and so was a time out. But a note home? Eek! I thought that would be terrible, until I realized that my home actually was room 26. Next came a phone call home, but I don't have a phone. And finally, a student who broke the rules again would be sent to the principal's office. I liked Principal Morales a lot, but I didn't think I'd like to have to go to his office and tell him I'd broken a rule. He'd be unsqueakably disappointed in me. I was imagining myself sitting in the principal's office after breaking one of the rules when I suddenly heard Mrs. Brisbane say, there is another rule in room 26. All the students must treat Humphrey and Og with the greatest respect. My ears perked up. Did you hear that, Og? I squeaked. She's talking about us. Boing, boing, Og splashed around in his tank, which made the strange children laugh. Mrs. Brisbane explained that the students would get to take turns bringing me home for the weekend, but first they'd have to learn to take care of me. And well, Og stayed in the classroom on weekends because he didn't need to be fed as often as I did, they would learn to take care of him as well. 
Then the teacher gathered the new group around my cage and put on some gloves so she could show them how to clean my cage. Who wants to hold Humphrey? She asked. Not surprisingly, lots, lots, lots of new students volunteered. Mrs. Brisbane slowly and gently picked me up. Never poke your finger in the cage, she told the students. Give Humphrey time to get used to you. Will he bite? Phoebe asked nervously. No way, I squeaked. Humphrey hasn't bitten anyone yet. But if someone poked a finger in his face, I wouldn't blame him, Mrs. Brisbane, Mrs. Brisbane said. When I had a hamster, he bit my finger, Joey said. But my mom said it was because he thought I was a carrot. Mrs. Brisbane nodded. And if you don't wash your hands before handling a hamster, he might smell the food you've eaten and think you're something to eat, too. I don't like to disagree with a teacher, but first of all, many humans have hands that don't smell like anything I'd want to eat. And I'm smart enough to tell the difference between a carrot and a finger. Let's see. Why don't you take him, Kelsey, she said. Kelsey looked surprised. I'm sure I did, too. Kelsey looked like a nice girl, but it did seem as if she could be more careful. Hold him in your hand like this. Mrs. Brisbane transferred me to Kelsey's outstretched hand. Make him feel very safe. Cup your other hand over his head like a little roof. I think he likes that. I do like that, as a matter of fact. Kelsey was so excited to be holding me, her hand actually shook a little. I suddenly remembered about her broken arm and her broken leg, and I hoped I wouldn't end up being a broken hamster. Don't worry, Humphrey. I'll be careful with you, she whispered. I relaxed, and so did she. The shaking stopped. Can I pet him, Simon asked. Gently, Mrs. Brisbane told him. He stroked my back with his fingers. It felt unsqueakably nice. Then Mrs. Brisbane got busy cleaning my cage. She took everything out, even my water bottle, and put it all in a big bucket of soapy water. Luckily, my mirror is firmly attached to my cage, and it stayed, as well as my notebook hiding behind it. Next, she took a brush and brushed, brushed, brushed everything clean. After that, she took all the soft, papery bedding out of my cage. What's that? Holly asked, pointing to the corner. That's Humphrey's bathroom area, Mrs. Brisbane replied. Those are his droppings. His poo? Thomas's eyes opened wide with surprise. Mrs. Brisbane nodded. Ew, poo, Thomas said. Somebody giggled. Then all of the kids started chanting, ew, poo, ew, poo, in a very rude way. Mrs. Brisbane shushed, shushed them. Come on, it's perfectly natural. Perfectly natural, I repeated. Besides, where else am I supposed to go? May I hold Humphrey, Rosie asked. I already know how to hold a guinea pig. Mrs. Brisbane carefully moved me from Kelsey's palm to Rosie's. Her hand didn't shake one bit. Next, the teacher scrubbed the bottom and the sides of my cage until they were unsqueakably clean. She let helpful Holly and just Joey put new bedding in my cage while Phoebe filled my water bottle. And Paul F. put fresh Nutri nibbles in my feeder. Yum! Paul G. put my wheel back in and made sure it was spinning properly, while Harry and Thomas put everything else back in its place. It looks and smells a lot better now, Humphrey, Mrs. Brisbane, sh Brisbane sh said as she gently carried me from Rosie's hand back to the cage. Check it out. I hopped on that shiny clean wheel and gave it all I had. Look at Humphrey go, Thomas T. True cried out. He must be going a million miles an hour. He couldn't be going a million miles an hour. He'd break the sound barrier at 768 miles. And I don't hear a sonic boom, Small Paul said. I was impressed, but I have to admit, I felt as if I was going a million miles an hour. I guess Thomas was just exaggerating a little, Mrs. Brisbane said. Thomas exaggerates a lot, Small Paul said. Now students, no bickering, Mrs. Brisbane told them. Let's go back to our places. I hopped off my wheel and settled down in that lovely fresh bedding. Phoebe raised her hand, and Mrs. Brisbane called on her. Did you say we could all get, we could all get to take Humphrey home? At one time or another, yes, was the answer. Phoebe's face lit up. If you don't get a turn right away, don't worry, the teacher continued. You'll get him eventually, as long as your parents sign a permission form. After all, families don't always have time for a hamster on the weekend. Phoebe's smile faded away, but I think I was the only one who noticed. I was the one smiling when Mrs. Brisbane asked the students who'd like to take me home, and every single hand went up. Maybe these new humans weren't quite as strange as I thought. Later, Mrs. Brisbane rearranged the seating in the classroom. First, she had everyone take their belongings to the sides of the room. Then she told each student where to sit. 
There were a few groans, but mostly the kids settled down without complaint until Mrs. Brisbane went back to the teaching and made some notes on the board. Suddenly, a hand began, began waving. Teacher, Mrs. Brisbane looked up. Please call me Miss Bris Brisbane, she said. What is it, Kelsey? I can't see with him, he, with him there, she pointed to tall Paul, who was seated directly in front of her. I could imagine it would be hard to see with Paul G. blocking her view. My mistake, Mrs. Brisbane said. I, have, I must have gotten, gotten the Pauls mixed up. Paul Green, could you switch with Paul Fletcher? Okay, tall Paul gathered his belongings and moved towards the side of the room. Small Paul picked up his notebook and backpack and moved towards the front of the room. He wouldn't block anyone's view. Somewhere in the middle, they almost walked right into each other. Watch out, I squeaked. Everybody laughed except the two Pauls. They carefully avoided walking into each other, and I noticed that they also avoided looking at each other. Now, can you see Kelsey, Mrs. Brisbane asked. I can see fine, Kelsey answered. Mrs. Brisbane continued with the lesson, but I couldn't concentrate. I was watching the two Pauls staring down at their desks. I was glad, glad, glad when the school bell rang at the end of the day, and only Mrs. Brisbane, Og, and I were left in the room. Whew, it had been a tiring day. Like most hamsters, I slept more during the day than at night, but with so much going on, I hadn't gotten much napping done. But there were no there was no time to sleep now. I needed to time myself to try I needed the time to myself to try and figure things out. I was deep in thought when I heard a familiar, friendly voice. I survived, the voice said. Congratulations, Mrs. Brisbane replied. I scampered up to up to a tree branch near the top of my cage as one of my human favorites, Miss Mack, entered the room. Miss Mack was beautiful. Miss Mack was sweet. Miss Mack was amazing. If it hadn't been for Miss Mack, I would probably still be living at boring old pet Orama, hoping that someone would give me a real home. Miss Mack found me there and brought me to room 26. Then she went to Brazil for a while, and I had to learn to live with Miss Brisbane. I wasn't too sure about her at first, but she turned out to be a great teacher. Now Miss Mack was back, but where had she been all day? She sank into a chair next to Mrs. Brisbane's desk. I have a lot to learn, she said. You'll be fine, Mrs. Brisbane assured her, but first grade is not easy. So that's where Miss Mack was. She was teaching first grade at Longfellow School. It's exciting, but there's so much to teach them, Miss Mack continued. I wish I had um, Humphrey and Og to help. She glanced over our way and waved. Hi, guys, she said. Hi, Miss Mack. You'll be great at first grade. Mark my words, I squeaked in encouragement while Og splashed loudly in his tank. How did your day go, Miss Mack asked Miss, Mrs. Brisbane. I think it will be a good year, Mrs. Brisbane said. Want to grab a cup of coffee? Would I, Miss Mack answered. While Mrs. Brisbane gathered up her things, Miss Mack came over to see Og and me. She leaned down close to my cage and I saw her big happy smile and her sparkling eyes. She smelled of apples. Maybe I can borrow you once in a while, she whispered. I hope so, I whispered back, but unfortunately I knew all she heard was a very soft squeak. Then Og and I were alone, left to think over the strange happenings of the first day of school. Thomas does exaggerate, I said to my neighbor. I think that fish story was a tall tale. Boing, he answered. Phoebe is very forgetful, but Holly is very, very, very helpful, I added. Boing, he agreed again. I wonder why Harry can't hurry up, I said after a little more thinking. Boing, boing, my friend replied. But I don't have time to worry about these strange students, I continued, because I'm busy worrying about what happened to my real friends from room 26, the ones from last year. I was silent for a few seconds, and then I squeaked. I squeaked what was really on my mind. Am I ever going to see them again? Humphrey's Rules of School Treat hamsters the way you'd like to be treated, which includes telling them where their friends have gone.